Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabita fillah A statement was made in which I have never witnessed the likes of in any shape or form related to scholars or du'ad of the da'wah to Ahl sunnah uh, an individual from the people of pure Hezbiah stated as a means to affirm and clarify his status as a believer and true follower, which in fact is one of the most dangerous cult-like idolizations of an individual I have ever witnessed in Islam outside of the statements of the extreme Sufis. The statement is as follows. So this individual, he put this out on Twitter saying, Oh brothers, I summon you to witness that indeed I am with Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi. May Allah preserve him. With respect to his speech, acknowledgments, judgments emanating from him regardless if it is tabdi, takfir, warning, or alienation. Then he goes on to say, all of it I accept in general and specific. Furthermore, I affirm its correctness regardless if I have seen the proof or not. And regardless if I know the gist of the speech or not. Firstly, the generality of this individual statement has wreaked havoc upon the usul, the qawaid, and the foundations of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And you khalif a minhaj salafi kamila. This statement, in its, it is explicit in its contradiction of the Salafi Minhaj, but yet the individual claims to be Salafi. And this goes back to an important Qaeda, Habitafillah, that the scholars mention, which is Al Ibra bi Haqaiq Laysa bi Musamiyat. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So even though an individual claims to be from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, claims to follow the Salaf al-Salih, claims to be Salafi, claims to be Ahlul Hadith, claims to be Ahlul Athar, the reality is in what they believe in their Aqidah and their methodology and Dawah, their Minhaj, and the other aspects of their following the religion, following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. And look at this, look at how the Imams of the Sunnah Here's how our Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi summed up the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, which differs. This individual, his Dawah is based on shakhs, a scholar, a scholar known for the Sunnah, known for his refutations of Ahlul Bid'ah, known to Yusibu Yukhti, Mithla Kullana, that he makes mistakes and he gets things correct, like, like all the people. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, All the children of Adam commit sins or make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes or sin are those who repent. So we're not saying we're all on the same level. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is that no alam, no one should be blind followed and made taqlid and ta'asab in such a wicked statement. This statement is wicked. And the statement goes against the madhab of the Salaf and the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah. Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi said, Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, Da'watun, min kitabillah, ila kitabillah, women sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sallam, ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sallam. He said that the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, now get this, compared to what this individual said. Imam Muqbil said, who's an imam? Unlike this individual, we don't know anything about him. He's just on Twitter, Twitter, just putting up 
spreading falsehood, spreading newly invented principles in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bid'ah, wamunkar, and then claiming that that's from the Dao to Ahl Sunnah. Sheikh Rabi would not accept this statement. And we're going to bring Dalil for this. Imam Mukbul said, Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah is the Dawah, I mean, it's the cause, the way we propagate Islam from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam Mukbil was saying here, the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah is not known by personalities and, and individuals. But rather, it is known by the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that the call of the caller and the one who adheres to that call should be the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Ta'zim Allah. Not ta'zim ashkhas. Not glorifying and exalting ashkhas. We love our ulama. And we love them mainly. Why? for their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the propagation of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So this individual said and showed and illustrated his very open ignorance. This is ignorance. This is absolute ignorance. That someone would say something like this is total ignorance. Because anyone who knows the Dawah to Salafiyya and anyone who knows the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah knows the Athar or knows at least and understands from the Usul comes this Athar of, I believe it's Imam, Ma Imam Malik, Rahmatullah Rahmatul Wasiya, in which he said, or you'll find it in Muat or Tamheed, Ibn Abdul Bar, he said, لا يعرف الحق برجال ولكن يعرف الرجال بالحق You don't know the truth based upon an individual but you know the individual based on the truth meaning we put individual so we put Sheikh Rabir we put Sheikh Fozan we put Sheikh uh, Bin Baz we put Sheikh Al Albani I am I had min a any one of the imams and the imams of the past who have greater status. We put them all on the scale of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can't just make ta'deem of them and say everything he said, Imam Abu Hanifa said, never made a mistake. He any ijtihad he made was perfect and I stand with everything. No, that's taqlid. And it can be so dangerous, this concept, it can lead to shirk and taking a person out of the fold of Islam if it is un if it is unrestricted to the state of, of worship or to the extent of saying that this individual, whatever he says, that's halal. He makes halal and he makes haram. His, in, his statements are halal and haram, regardless of what the text. So that's the most extreme manifestations of it. And that's what we find in some of the extreme Sufis. Not all the Sufis, of course, there's many gradations. Some people would like to sow off and some people who are extreme who are even out of the fold of Islam because they worship their sheikhs and they worship the Sadiqeen and they worship others. So this individual showed his illustration, his ignorance regarding the usul of Salafiyya and the minhaj of the Salaf and his ta'til, his negation, his negation of its usul. He negated that usul. We just gave you an athar of the salaf, which is an athar which symbolizes the madhab in the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah. But this person made ta'til of that, that, uh, that, that asl, that foundation principle. Leading him to then make tabdil of the principles with newly invented ones. So his newly invented minhaj is based upon Sheikh Rabi. Sheikh Rabi is an alam, as we said. Yusibu yukhti. He makes mistakes and he's correct. And none of the a'immat al-deen, a'immat ahlu sunnah were happy with someone making taqlid of them on al itlaq But rather, what made them from ahlu sunnah is their ta'zim of kitab wa sunnah. 
the truth. The second point of Habatifillah, this individual, he said, and which illustrates extremism, this ghulu, this extremism towards ashkhas, ta'asab bil ashkhas, or taqlib bil ashkhas, to make, uh, to blind follow individuals or have a prejudice uh, towards and leaning towards certain individuals, adhering to what they say in everything and what differs with them, you make al wala wal bara based upon that. And this is exactly the menage of individuals like this. The danger of this Ahabat al is we saw that extremism with regards to the righteous is one of the means that leads to the major shirk. That this can take a, fold, a person out of the fold of Islam. If you allow it, you establish this principle. Then those after you begin to take that ta'vim to another level. Next thing you know, they'll have pictures of the shaykh all over the place. Next thing you know, the next group of people will come to worshiping him, saying, saying he was the usul of Ahl sunnah He was the, the scale to measure by. He is the one that we show our allegiance and our worship towards. Don't think that that's something impossible because it happened to so many in the history of Islam billah. so this individual Muhammad I'm not going to mention his last name he said indeed I accept the judgments emanating from him regardless stop there I accept the judgments emanating from him regardless I don't think this individual yaksid that he intends that he wants to go against the truth. I don't think he intends that. But it, he's blinded. He's sick. He's sick. And he's ignorant. Because he didn't. He couldn't have studied. I, I, don't, I refuse to believe that a talib al-ilm, talib al-sunnah, could, could say these statements like this. Although we've seen. We have seen it. I, I can't. But it, it's a travesty. It's a travesty the kind of taqlid and the danger and the fitna that this brings with the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the division between Ahl Sunnah and the destruction of the da'wah in so many places because of blind following individuals and ahkam that individuals make without looking at the dalil, without investigating at all. So he said, indeed I accept the judgments emanating from him. Emanating sounds, it's a bit strong. It sounds like, you know, these... It sounds dangerous. Emanating from him regardless. Regardless of what? Regardless if it's the truth or false? What, what are you saying? That's a dangerous statement. Then he goes on to say, Furthermore, I affirm. Ashhad. It's like taking the shahada. Furthermore, I affirm its correctness. Regardless, again, if I have seen the proof or not. That is jahil and that is batil. That is falsehood and ignorant of a state ignorance. And what illustrate this, listen to this, this statement. This is a statement of uh, Imam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala who said, as many of you are aware in his Asul al in the in the first, the, the four principles, he said, إِنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَ تَعَلَّمْ عَرْبَا مَسَائِلَ الْأُولَى الْعِلْمِ وَهُوَ مَعْرُفَةُ اللَّهُ وَمَعْرُفَةُ الْدَّبِيُّ وَمَعْرُفَةُ الدِّينَ الْإِسْلَامِ بِيَدِّلَّهُ أَثَانِي he said, verily, it's an obligation upon every Muslim to learn, to learn, to get ilm. And then he said, and then he, he defined what ilm is. He said, al-ilm, wa He said, and it is ma'rufat Allah. It's knowing Allah. So you have to know about tawheed. And knowing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his sunnah as much as possible. And it is knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. So that means you have to, you are responsible for learning the truth. You can't say, well, Sheikh so-and-so says this about Aqidah, I, I just accept it regardless, whether I know the proof or not. That is a dangerous Aqidah which leads to destruction and it leads to the minhaj of those of the halakin. 
Those who the messengers said, If Tarakatil Yahuda let to was a rain ferco, if Tarakatil Nasara let in the Tain was a rain ferca, who said that Tariku had the Umala Talata was a rain ferca, Kulla half in Nara Lawahi, the Kuna mean here Yarasulullah, Kalaman Kana, the Mithu Makana Ali, who was Abi Al Yong. The Prophet said, The Jews are breaking the 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my Ummah and the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He sallallahu alayhi wa said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum So that's the sunnah we're ordered to follow. We're not ordered to follow the sunnah of any particular individual. And we have to know the sunnah. With adilla. Not based on, on hawa. Because then anyone can lead you to the right and to the left. And it's a dangerous, dangerous religion. And going back to that ethic of the Salaf, La Yu'araf al Haq. Birajawalakin Yu'araf al Rijal bil Haq. We don't know, you don't, the, the men are, uh, the truth is not known by men. It's not known by, by uh, an individual, meaning an individual is always correct. If you want to know what the Haq is, you want to know what Islam is, you want to know what the Sharia is, look at so and so. La. But rather, we use. Uh, the truth to judge the men. The men are judged. The truth is the haq. The haq is the haq. And we're ordered to follow the haq. Ahabatifillah, there's so much to say in this bab. And from the statements, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Inna ladhina farraku deenuhum wa kanu shi'an lasta minhum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, Verily those who divided their religion uh, into groups, there's, there is, uh, basically they have no substance. There's nothing to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and do not be like those who divided and caused division. Tafarraq. Tafarraq, they, they divided and they separated after the truth came to them. So there's no doubt when you make taqlid and ta'asab to an individual, you're dividing yourself. You're dividing yourself first from the truth, from the haq. Because the haq is not with any individual. It's not Dawata Rabi'i or Dawata Fawzani or Dawata Umari Hatta Al Khatabi Umar bin Al Khatab radiallahu ta'ala in La. It's a Dao of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Minhaj al Anbiya. Imam Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah says a beautiful statement. And I think we'll end there because this is longer than I wanted to discuss this issue. He says, وَلَيْسَ لِلْمُعَلَّمِينَ أَنْ يُجِيزُونَ النَّاسِ وَيَفْعَلُوا مَا يَلْقِي بَيْنَهُمْ أَدَاوَةٍ وَالْبَغْضَاءٍ بَلْ يُكُونُ مِثْلَ إِخْوَى مُتَعَاوَنِينَ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَتَعَوَنَ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوَنْ وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا عَلَى إِثْمِ وَعُدْوَان uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, it is not for those, uh, those, those teachers, those mu'allameen, uh, to yahzabu, to make the people into hizbs. Look at the hizbiyah. Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah is talking about hizbiyah. It's not for the teachers. So that could be your scholars. That could be the du'at, whoever. To make the people into groups and parties. And for them to do to, so that in order that they uh, cause enmity and hatred between the people. But rather, they should be brothers cooperating on bitter wa taqwa, on piety and God-fearfulness. As Allah the Almighty says, ala wa taqwa, wa la ala ithmi wa And cooperate all of you together 
in piety and God-fearfulness and do not cooperate in ithem, sinfulness, and enmity. So when you create a hizb and you say you have to follow Sheikh so-and-so and all of his hukum, you follow him in takfir, you follow him in tibdir, you don't look at the dalil, but you just follow everything he says, that means if he's wrong about so-and-so in his takfir, or if he's wrong about so-and-so in his tibdir, and you've now become an instrument of spreading that ideology or spreading his mistake better yet, and then building an ideology and a hizb based upon that, look at the danger you spread in the ummah of Muhammad sallam, and what Allah wa ta'ala is going to hold you accountable for. You see? You see the danger? There's so much to say. وقال, Imam, uh, Shaykh al-Islam also says, وَلَيْسَ لِأَهَدْ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يَخْذْ عَلَىٰ أَهَدْ أَهْدٍ Subhanallah, look at that. Under the heaven, look at that. That is, Sheikh Islam is making a refutation on Ain al Hizbiya. Exactly, Hizbiya, this Qaida Hizbiya. This Qaida Hizbi. This Hizbi principle of you got to take from Sheikh so-and-so. Uh, Sheikh so-and-so said this. We make love and hate based upon that. That's what drives a person to say those kind of statements. This brother Muhammad, he sh he needs got to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Hizbi is a danger. It's a sickness. It's it consuming. And it destroys the da'wah to Ahl sunnah So Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, وَلَيْسَ لِي أَحَدْ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يَخْضْ عَلَىٰ أَحَدْ أَحْدٍ so it is not from anyone from them, meaning anyone from those scholars and those du'at. So the scholars can't force you to make al-wallah wal bara based upon an individual and test the people and destroy the da'wah. So he said, and yakhud al-ahdin, to make a pact, to make a pact, to agree with him on everything that he wants and to love who he loves and hate who he hates. Here's what Shaykh al-Salaam ibn Taymiyyah says and we're going to stop there. He says, Bel, men fa'ala hadha kanam in jens jengis khan. Shaykh al-Salaam ibn Taymiyyah says, he said, the one who does that, who makes this type of hizbiyah, this al-wala based on ashkhas, that this is from a type of action or a nur of Genghis Khan. That's a cold statement right there, habitifillah. Is that the sunnah that you want to follow? Under, in the present day, this is the Trump ideology, but it's built on so many... Uh, partisan ideologies from the past. But we're ordered to follow Islam and the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we can't make his bia. We can't force people to accept what our Sheikh says. But rather we invite the people to the Dalil. Your love and your hate is not based on individuals and personalities. It's based on the haq. Qala Allah, qala Rasul. So I may like Sheikh Rabi. And I'm saying this, I like Sheikh Rabi. I have almost all of his books. But I don't make my love and hate. If I find someone that wants to criticize him legitimately, for whatever reason, they disagree with the hukum he did on Sheikh so-and-so or Sheikh so-and-so, just as I don't agree with every akam he made, I don't make love and hate based on that. Ah, I'm not going to talk to that brother anymore. I'm going to build my religion, my al-wala, my bara, al-bara, Based upon this, this hukum, you should have made tabdi of Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali, Mithlan. You should have made tabdi of uh, Abdulaziz al Rai or whoever. But no, I'm going to look at the, the evidence of the Sheikh if I have the ability to do so. So we're not saying, we're not negating taqlid at all in all scenarios. If you don't have the, 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 uh, the qudra, the ability to do bath into the issue. But what we're saying is the danger of those kind of statements that this individual Muhammad made 
is a type of sickness that's been going on for some, quite some time. And there are individuals that are even students of knowledge and people who are du'at, who know better, but yet they propagate and they allow this kind of ideology to spread because it's not Islamic. It's not Islamic. And it's it's Hizbiya, it's pure Hizbiya. So how can you allow Hizbiya to spread, but then claim you detest Hizbiya? We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah wa ta guide us and this individual to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah forgive us of all our sins. Anything I said that was correct from Allah, anything I said that was incorrect for myself, the shaitan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Muhammad.